Hello Garden Universe, Jane here. It's the middle of June, the roses are in peak bloom, and um, I'll, I'll show you what's going on today. Just a, a little walkthrough in some select areas of my garden. This is a thornless rose called Wilkenblau. It's a, a German variety, I believe, and it means blue rose. It's, a, it's unusual. I don't have a rose this color. I'm up in a far corner of the garden. Um, on the other side of this thick rose hedge is the street, the main street. A lot of traffic goes by and I wanted a buffer zone. I haven't seen this rose in a really long time. It's, it's a rare rose. I think it's called John Mason. It's one of the m most true red roses in my garden. A cherry tree fell down and opened up a lot more light and so this rose has been able to scramble up amongst some of the big ramblers out here. Scrambling through all of the rambling roses is honeysuckle. Wonderful, wonderful honeysuckle. The hummingbirds love it, but so do I. And roses. Underneath this hedge, we have to keep it cleared out right there. That's our, our water main to um, city water. This big pink rose is a favorite of one of my daughters. It's called Constant Spry. Oh, when she comes to visit, she will pick very large bouquets of Constance. It's, it's quite fragrant. I pulled the tulle fabric back away from the corn. The rabbits are leaving it alone now. They, the rabbits tend to prefer young, tender, new shoots and not this more mature plants. I've planted a marrow to grow through the corn patch. I, I've never grown marrow before. I don't even know what it is. I'm assuming a squash. The seed of the marrow came from Mark Clements. Now we'll go out past the Marion and Raspberry. Uh, Marion and Raspberries have been netted and the artichoke bed has been netted. That's to keep rabbits out. Those are the potted cherry tomatoes that I started from grocery store cherry tomatoes. More roses. This is a Gallica called Queen of Denmark. We made a pass-through gate back into the food forest where we did some clearing of all the, the weeds and blackberries and the locust trees. We found a little rare rose that's never bloomed. The deer ate it to the ground year after year. We finally gave it some room to grow. Oh, this rose is the apothecary rose. It's just kind of um, scrambling around out here trying to survive. This is probably one of the oldest known European varieties that the monks grew in their monastery gardens way, way back um, before the Dark Ages. Next to the apothecary rose is a uh, moss rose. This is another very ancient variety. Likes, it likes to grow with neglect, it looks like, and especially if the deer can't find it, it does very well. See those little mossy leaves surrounding the bud? Oh, we are gonna have a bumper crop of Japanese plums this year. So I'm here back under the hemlock tree looking at the border fence between us and the neighbor and the very busy street. Those are poplar trees, the tallest trees in the neighborhood. And I planted those way back when we moved here. I brought them home from the nursery, hanging out the back of my little station wagon. And the big evergreen next to it is a Leland Cypress. I planted it also out of a little tiny gallon pot. Uh, over the last couple years, dear husband climbed up there. I couldn't look, it was so scary. But he uh, thinned all the branches so we could get some morning sun into our garden. And the neighbor likes that too. I'm behind the Rosemane statue looking up at flowers 
on the lovage plant. I believe that's probably 10 feet. Time to chop and drop the lovage. It's huge. And remember the clematis I was so excited about blooming? Oh, it is. It's in full bloom underneath the Paul Recalt rose. It's really pretty, I hear. And you cannot find this little lovely piece of garden unless you wander back into the heart of the romantic garden. It's hidden. It is hidden from everyone but me. In the nursery area, I have a lot of vegetables in pots that I, I just didn't know where to put them or I didn't have anywhere to put them. And there, my first eggplant ever. I've never even eaten an eggplant before. So there, that's going to change pretty soon, I think. In these two tubs, I've got some, some protected things too. I've got kohlrabi, purple. I don't know the name of it. Let's see, what's it called? Uh, ooh, star purple, azure star purple. And there's some peppers in here, banana pepper. In these two tubs, I've got a few things. I've got um, oh, comfrey, whorehound, globe artichoke. This is Gallica, Charles de Mills. Purpley, purpley pink. I see a bunny. I think there's another bunny in the garden. I think it's, yeah, right there. A little baby bunny. That's why I have the netting, the plastic netting around the peas. To keep that little bunny from munching. Can you see him? Oh, he is trying to hide from me. But I see you, baby bun. Oh, another reason why I grow a lot of things in containers is because there are so many bunnies and deer and all things that like to munch. So the dahlias are growing out of reach. Oh, there is no dirt visible in any of my beds now and that is just the way I like it. When there is no dirt visible, weeds have no room to, to crowd the desirable things out. And so you don't see very much soil visible in my garden. In fact, at this time of year, it's uh, tricky to even find a pathway through the garden. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ooh. This is my honey crisp apple. It's supposed to be a dwarf. It's very robust. Uh, there's another coddling moth trap that I hung. No coddling moth just flies. This tree is going to bear very heavily this year. Again. Last week I started foliar feeding the, the apple trees and pear trees. Uh, nothing toxic. Uh, I mix liquid kelp, humic acid, and CalMeg, uh, liquid calcium magnesium. And then the water I use is out of the fish pond, my fish tank water. And um, every two weeks, I have been spraying the fruit trees. They look fantastic this year. Under the honey crisp apple is the Cinderella pumpkin bed. They're doing very well. They're getting the benefit of the foliar spray that falls on them from the apple trees. And we have pumpkins, two Cinderella pumpkins. This is uh, my daughter's favorite pumpkin and it is my favorite eating pumpkin. I've planted them uh, in this area. I think there's three, three vines. And they're just about to the fence. And I will train them under the fence. And so, thank you for taking a walk with me in the romantic garden this morning. I hope you enjoyed my video. I enjoy making them. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you like this video, give a thumbs up or a like. And um, we'll see you again next time, friends. Cheers, everyone.